In this presentation, we will calculate OASTI or Social Security. We're currently here on the payroll register. What we see on the payroll register so far is our two employees. We've gotten to the total earnings here. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course, each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. And now we're ready to take a look at the OASDI. So these are gonna be the two employees. I'm gonna scroll back over. We can't see the names, Bill and Pam but we'll scroll this over here so we can concentrate on where we need to concentrate. So we've got the total earnings uh, for our two employees. We need to know what the OASDI wages are, which is normally the same, but could differ uh, if someone hits this cap, which we're saying for this problem is 128,400. That will probably, that goes up typically from year to year. But if we know the cap, the concept will be the same. So what we need to do is, is know, did anyone hit the cap? Looking at these two numbers, you say, well, no, no one hit the cap there, and there's, that's way less than here. But obviously what we're doing here is trying to figure out, did they hit the cap up to this point in time? This only shows one pay period. And so what we need to do, there, this is pay period 40, is go through their registers and say, okay, where are they at from year to date? How much have they earned year to date? And that's how we need to determine if they have or not hit the cap. To do that, we'll go to the earnings records. We're gonna go to the earnings records tab and we're going to scroll all the way up to the top and i'm looking for this is uh, bill smith now it doesn't look like they're going to have a, a problem here based on the income for bill so if we scroll back down uh to to the end of this we're at pay period before pay period 40 before we do this not anywhere near total earnings or social security earnings nowhere near the cap so we look good there if we keep scrolling back down to, now we're on uh, Judy, by the way, or Pam, and we scroll back down. Uh, we we see that we could have a problem here, and this is where we're actually going to have. So we need to make sure that we're before this calculation, before the week that we're in. If we look at the total, it adds up to one twenty-five five thirty-five. So the question then is: Is the difference to bring us up to where we need to be, or to the cap uh, of? 128,400 minus the 125,535. That's 2,865. That's less than uh, if that if that is less than the OASDI wages, which it typically is because it's being 3,118. Then we need to use the lesser of the two, and if we use that 2,000. 865, it'll get us up to the cap, and we cannot go beyond the cap that will be the point. So for her, we're gonna use this 2,865 rather than the normal wages. So if we go back over here, we know that this is the one we really gotta watch out for because that's the big earner here. And that's gonna be at 2,865. And note again, you can't really tell on, on the uh, payroll register. That's why you need to link it to the earnings, earnings report. And if we don't do that, we'll end up paying too much social security. So when it gets to uh, bill, is not gonna be a problem to, to hit that cap. There could be a difference, however, between the total earnings and uh, the OASDI as well in terms of the if there's a cafeteria plan. And for this problem, we're gonna say it's 250 for the cafeteria plan. So we're gonna say this equals the total earnings minus the 250 for the cafeteria plan. So that's gonna be their wages. If we sum this up then, total SUM, and we sum that up, we're going to get 3,371.50. Okay, so then we're going to calculate the taxes on it. Now I'm going to do it over here because sometimes it's helpful to see it vertically. This is how I would we would punch it into a calculator. This is how you probably want to do it in a problem is have a vertical calculation. So I'm going to calculate the employer and employee portion 
just so we can get an idea of the fact that there is an employer and employee portion. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the wages and I'm gonna take the total this time as well. And that's, wanna emphasize the fact that because it's a flat tax rate, we can take the total and or we can take the sum of the taxes for the individuals. That's the nice thing, the beauty of a flat tax. So we're gonna take this total, I'll just say equals that total, and then we'll multiply it times the rate, which is 6.2% or 0.062, 6.2%. Then we'll multiply that out. So I'm gonna bring this over to the outside column, equals this total times the 6.2% gives us the 20903. <laughs> and then we'll do the same thing for the employer portion. Note the employer is gonna to have to pay as well. So it's just gonna be the same thing. It's gonna be that same total times the OAST rate, 0.062, and then we'll multiply it out. This equals this number times the rate. So note, we just have an employer and employee portion. That'll give us a total of these two. So if we say equals this number plus this number, that gives us our total. I'm gonna go ahead and double underline the form. I'm gonna format paint this, home tab, format paint, put the double underline here as well. So there is gonna be our totals. Now we're gonna to get to that same total here for the employee portion in our register. We're not gonna put the employer portion in this portion of the register. We're gonna to have to calculate that when we do the journal entry, however. So we'll do the same thing here, but this time we'll do it employee by employee or equals the 506.50 times 0.062. That's 31. For the second employee equals this number times 0.062 that's the 177.63 and if we add those together with the sum function equals the sum of these two that'll give us our 20903 and that of course matches the employee portion that we calculated here as a total from the total and the employer portion we'll have to add to that when we do the journal entries